Rub up your engines! It's topless! You don't find too many topless Toyotas, let me tell you. Now it didn't start out as a topless car. They were regular Celicas, and then they converted them here in the United States to convertibles. They did a very good job converting them, and before this, there were some guys that actually converted them themselves. But this was one that was done by Toyota. Now you can see, the car itself was made in Japan, but the conversion was done in the United States. And they did a pretty good job of it. Love these little convertibles. Toyota wasn't a convertible company. You get the reliability of a Toyota, but you get the fun of a convertible. Now, unlike the last model of Celicas, when they changed the body style radical, and a bunch of them had those Yamaha engines that blew up, this has an ultra dependable Toyota engine. It's a 2.2 liter four cylinder. Yeah, it's got a timing belt on it, but like most Toyotas made, it's a non-interference engine. So, if the belt ever did break, you just take it apart and put it together. It doesn't really hurt anything. Now you can see he's modified it. He's stuffing it with brace. Put a little cold air intake on it. But, it is a Toyota. As you can see, it still has the original air conditioning compressor. And yes, it still blows cold. And yes, this is the original alternator on it, and it still works perfectly fine. And if you're safety conscious, still has working ABS. It's the Ace and ABS, which works quite well. Now, I, for one, don't understand why they got rid of this body style and put in that last model Celica body style, which, as far as I'm concerned, was ugly. Oh, it was more modern, they thought, right? Well, the main reason they did it was to save money. They charged a lot less for the later model ones. They were cheaper made. Just try this if you've got one around. You can hear this door. Solid. Try it on the last year they had, they sound tinny. They're thinner, cheaper, and they had those Yamaha engines, a lot of them, that broke all the time. And since it's a Toyota, an electronic convertible top on it, still works fine. Toyota makes them a lot better than most people, but if it ever did break, it's mechanical too. You can just pull it up and lock it in place. The best of both worlds. And of course, this is my favorite. It's got a five-speed standard transmission. No wimpy automatic in this thing. Now, the leather seats, you can see there's some black tape here. It's typical. The driver's the main one. The back seat, hardly anybody ever sat in, and they still look brand new. Now, it has been converted to a convertible, so let's check the trunk. As you can see, there's still a reasonable amount of room in the trunk. It doesn't hog the trunk. You still got a good trunk. And it's still got the nice stock wheel. And of course, importantly, this is an East Coast car. It's in Massachusetts now. Let's look for rust. Now, what do we find? Really solid. Are the wheel wells rotten? No. Clean air. They're clean air. And last but not least, they're clean air. Toyota knew how to use zinc primer and anti rust. Even back here in 96, my 94 Celica, it doesn't have rust. My son's 93 Celica. It didn't have rust on it either. Built them correctly back in the day. They should have kept making these things. Yeah, they're not racing engines, but they're fun little convertibles. Think Mazda Miata. Hey, they've been selling a bunch of those. They're not race cars. This was never a race car. Trying to put that fancy Yamaha designed engine in that blew up. Big mistake. They put it in a cheaper car, tinnier, didn't ride as well. The engines blew up. You don't see these engines blowing up. You can modify it. You see, he's put drilled and slotted rotors on the thing. He's bumped it up a little. You can lift stock. You can play with them. Let's take it for a little ride. Here's a little sticker showing I wasn't making it up. Okay, this vehicle's been altered in ASC Long Beach, December 1995. We'll start her up. The Toyota, you know it's going to start. And as I said, you can modify him. He's modified it here. And he's got a rear view mirror on it too. You can't see it with the sun in it because the top's down. <laughs> but there's a rear view mirror in here. Then he's got a camera that reads off the back. Doesn't work if you're getting bright sunlight, but <laughs> in the dark it does. Now the first thing you notice is it's all 187,000 miles. It doesn't shake at all. This is one smooth engine. You take off. It's got some zip to it. Now, I'm not a fan of cold air intakes, but he put one on here. It runs fine because he likes the noise. And here we go on the highway. Got some nice zip. It's a very nice handling car. These things are fun to zoom around in. It hogs the road quite well. And even though it's got original struts on it, it still rides pretty good. Hey, for the three grand he paid, he got a pretty good deal. A lot of fun shifting through the gears on this thing. And really, for a convertible, 
Hey, it's a pretty quiet, smooth car. Now this may be an old car, but it's a 96, so. The giant scan tool. Here we go, it's communicating. But it's so old, I gotta put the VIN in manually. And so here we go, diagnose. You're not gonna get much information on an old car like this, but we can do a smart scan. And even though it's a 1996, it's still green. There are no codes. Not surprising, it's a Toyota. Just don't expect much information though. <laughs> you saw, there were just a few lines. Some of those have hundreds of lines. This just says a few. You're not gonna get much information out of one of these things on such an old car. As you can see here, it says no signal output from diagnostic side. Read codes from the ABS lamp. So even though it's technically OBD2, it's early system. A lot of the crap doesn't work the way it does in a modern one you gotta expect that i mean this car doesn't have any problems but you're not gonna get much data out of any machine on an old thing like this 96 you could get a toyota dealer level one you get a little bit more information but not all that much don't expect to get a lot of data from an old car that's a 96 even a toyota i mean let's face it the thing runs fine it's idling you can barely hear it the dash is totally clean. There's no kinds of warning lights on. Hey, check it out. Even the tachometer still works. Heck, it's broken on my old 94 Solica. It finally conked out. Now, I really doubt you're going to find one like this for three grand like he did. <laughs> But a fun toy, it's only gonna go up in value if you take care of it like he does. It's not rusted, it's not gonna rust. It's coated correctly. It's not gonna become one of those rust buckets. I'll drive it a while, when it rusts, I'll throw it away. No, you can keep these things for a long time. In a Toyota, you can have a lot of cheap, fun. He was telling me the air conditioning heat didn't work when he bought it. So I took the dash apart and found out that a bunch of the insulation had gotten sucked into the fan. <laughs> He just took it out, now it blows freezing cold when the AC's on and it puts out tons of heat when the winter's here. These things are pretty much bulletproof if you take care of them. The previous owners took good enough care of this one that now it's in immaculate shape, fun to drive around in, and doesn't cost money to maintain. And here's some bonus questions and answers. 101 Nano 2 says, is there really a difference in fuel quality among all the different gas stations? There's all kinds of prices. My dad says cheap gas is not well made. Our most expensive is 50 cents more. What should I do? I understand something a lot of people don't know. Most areas in the United States, there's only one refinery and all the gas comes from the same refinery. And the only difference is theoretically, if it's an Exxon gas, they put their additives in it after it's refined. If it's Texaco, they put a different additive package in it, but basically they're all the same gasoline. There's no such thing as cheap gasoline in the United States. It's all regulated by federal law. They have to meet certain standards that it really doesn't matter. Now, back in the day, you could have a problem because if you went to a little station, it could be that they have water in their gas because the gas tanks are underground. They used to be made out of solid metal and the electrolysis of the metal and the pump and the earth, which is ground, would actually eat up the metal through electrolysis and then water, groundwater, get inside, you'd get water in the gas, it would run it. But ages ago, they dug all those up and put in fiberglass reinforced tanks that don't rust. So you don't have to worry about that. You can buy your gas anywhere. It, it really doesn't matter. You don't even know where it's coming from half the time. Like I say, one company generally makes it and then they mix it all together. I had a, a friend in Jersey and said, you know, my dad used to deliver gas in Jersey. He said, and back in those days, it was exactly the same gas, but depending on what station he took it to, they put a little dye in. If it was green, they put green dye. It's red, they put red dye. He put it in when he put them in the tanks, and it was the same gas on all of them. They've gone past that today, hopefully, but still. Most of it comes from the same place anyway, so don't worry about it. You can go by price. Buy the cheapest stuff to save money. All right, battle of the American luxury SUVs only. Out of these, what would you get? I know you'd get Japanese, but say you had to buy one of these. A 2022 Cadillac Escalade with the V8 420 horsepower 10-speed auto, a 2022 Lincoln Navigator with EcoBoost V6 440 with the 10-speed auto or a Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 6.4 V8 471 with an 8-speed auto. Well, of course, I'd never buy any of them, but out of those, you're going to be shocked. I would buy the Jeep, and you know why? Because those are good V8 engines, and it's got an 8-speed automatic. That is a well-made eight-speed automatic. Jeep doesn't make them. I believe they buy them from Austria. Both the Lincoln Navigator and the Cadillac have those 10-speed automatics that they've had problems with. GM and Ford decided we're going to make 10-speed transmissions together, and Ford did the forefront of the 10-speed rear-wheel drive with both of those halves. So Ford said, we did all this research on a rear-wheel drive, and you didn't help us with the front-wheel drive, so now we're not going to help each other anymore. The cats and dogs stopped working together for a while, right? The Cadillac and the Lincoln have that stupid 10-speed automatic that 
I'm not a fan of. I see problems as they age. In that case, I would really go with the Jeep. Their V8s are okay. I'm not a Jeep fan. It's got that Austrian eight-speed transmission in it, which is an excellent transmission. And the engines, the V8, they still make decent V8 engines. I'd go, I wouldn't buy any of them, of course. But if I had to, I'd buy that because I see the other ones I don't like at all. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.